Welcome to Jurassic World. Welcome to Jurassic World Minute with Jurassic World One Minute Time. How did they get one of these started? I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And on this episode, we're discussing Minute 74 of Jurassic World. Before we get to that, David, over at Jurassic um, the guys over there have been flat out over the last couple of weeks with Cape uh, Cretaceous coming out on Netflix. All the episode breakdowns, new characters we see, um, new dinosaurs we see, Scorpius Rex, um, new articles going up there hourly, and it's it's fantastic and good to see yeah yeah we've been working really or well i should i should say uh that our two main contributors uh sickle claw and shorten formosas have both been working very very dedicatedly to get these up get those up there for us hmm yep well you uh we use the um the episode by episode breakdowns to discuss season three uh last week and then in the Jurassic minutes um, so they're there with also links in those uh, episode breakdowns to animals and characters we see in their their bios as well. So um, the guys have been doing some great work over there, and it's um, it continues to be a fantastic reference tool for the series. Yeah. That road goes straight back to the park. <laughs> How'd they even get one of these things started? Dave, ready to get a minute seventy four of Jurassic World? Uh, yeah. Alright, Minute 74 of Jurassic World opens with the boys launching out of the garage in a very old jeep, and ends with Indominus searching the garage for Owen and Claire. As we race into Minute 74, Zack floors Jeep uh, Jeep 28, and it screeches out of the garage, coughing and spluttering. (laughs) I would have loved to see some of the vines tear away from the the roll bars and that as it drives out, Um, just again showing that the jungle was trying to take back everything, and um, it had been attached to the vehicle, but... No, it sort of just drives out and the vines just sort of pull off it and just hang there from the roof. I mean, I'm more concerned with the with the fact that the tires are screeching on the concrete like it's brand new concrete. That that <laughs> should be not 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 brand new concrete and should not be screeching. We'll we'll get to the concrete surface when when Alan turns up. Also, this we're launching out of the garage into the unknown. <laughs> We know there's a road there, but it's tall grass. It's sort of something you might want to take a little bit more cautiously. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I mean, especially because, like, tall grass is so easily able to hide, like, like stumps and uh, debris and rocks and all kinds of stuff that you do not want to run your car over. I know that my cousin almost bottomed out his Jeep by running over a stump in some tall grass. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yep. Well, considering this clearing that the tall grass is in, there'd be items, objects out there that weren't either too big or not stored in the maintenance garage. Um, we see an engine block inside the maintenance garage that we haven't really talked about, but um, a V8 engine block, but... Surely the vehicle it belongs to may be out there uh, with the bonnet up, <laughs> hidden in the long grass, or just 44-gallon drums of fuel, tyres, uh, all that sort of um, stuff you get around a garage um, could be just sitting out there, scattered around by animals over time and then covered by grass. Mm-hmm. But that's when we cut to Owen and Claire close by, and you can hear the sound of the Jeep uh, echoing through the jungle, and you just sort of see the look on Owen's face like, 
what the hell is that? <laughs> this is the way it's running. But they both run out of the jungle and find the open garage. Which raises so many questions here. <laughs> They're heading for the old park, uh, knowing the boys would be here. Does Owen know that the old park's there? Um, again, he, this is his Navajo training, being able to track the boys through the uh, long grass. Why'd they come out the back of the visitor centre and not the front? I imagine that most people probably are aware that the that the old park is there. Whether or not they've seen it is probably... Like uh, like Lowry mentioned earlier in the film that he bought a T-shirt that had been in the visitor center off eBay. So obviously a guest had traversed through the jungle to get there to steal stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm assuming that guest was pro- probably promptly banned for life from the resort. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Damn it, I lost my train of thought now. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, um, even if Owen hasn't been there personally, I'm sure he's heard stories. Mm-hmm. I've overheard workmen at the Raptor Pen talking about it or or anything like that as well. So, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we know from the kids from Camp Cretaceous that there are like even like urban legends about mm. what happened at the, par- at the first park, you know? Yeah, yep, yep. And you just imagine all the stories that started coming out after the San Diego incident when the world mm-hmm. learnt of uh, InGen and the dinosaurs. But as they enter the garage here, it's a lot seems a lot lighter than when the boys were in there. Um, this sort of movie debris on the floor, and you can see the two clear wheel tracks on the concrete where the Jeep was, <laughs> and that's about it. There's no no sort of um, decay on the on the floor whatsoever, apart from just we'll throw some leaves over the concrete. <laughs> which is probably why we got that squeal from the tyres earlier. Um, but uh, Owen kneels down, picks up Zach's hoodie, and asks, is this one of theirs? And it seems to be covered in oil, so maybe mm-hmm. there's some more mechanicing going on than what we actually see in the film. Uh, yeah. Because we do get in the novel that they change the oil as well, so... Mm-hmm. Whether there's more here that was cut, yeah, we don't know. It's never surfaced, but... Uh, Owen walks over to Jeep 18 and leans his rifle against its side. And uh, in the foreground, as I mentioned before, you can see that very large V8 engine (laughs) sitting there, which you can only wonder, was it a hobby of one of the workers? Or why (laughs) on this uh, eco-safari park island is there a big block V8 (laughs) on an engine stand? Well, I imagine, well, the Jeep's run on gas, so it's probably one of the Jeep's engines. And on a environment like Isla Nublar, you do want to have a engine that's going to give you some more oomph. <laughs> you know? It was the Bigfoot Jeep that someone was working on. <laughs> <laughs> Monster truck. Yeah, it's it, it's a gay game. They've just... They've decorated this garage with all sorts of uh, air quotes, mechanical um, items that they can, and someone thought it was, oh, we'll just throw an engine in here and an engine engine crane and not, uh, not worry about the rest of it, because we do get um, the block and tackle hanging from the roof here as well that Owen passes, so they have the uh, the winch there to be able to pull an engine out of a vehicle mm-hmm. if, if need be, or lift something heavy, but Owen tries the ignition, and of course it doesn't start, but behind him, Claire says that uh, that road heads straight back to the park. We mentioned that last minute that one of them did, and it's clear here that says says that, mm-hmm. but as you mentioned, what road? <laughs> All there is out there is long grass. <laughs> well, Presumably what was once a road. Mm. It might have even been something that was like an access road that Masrani had built that just they abandoned. When they abandoned any attempt at renovating the visitor center, they also abandoned that road to it, you know? Mm. Yep. Yep, or just use it to access the site to uh, to clear out. Mm-hmm. Clear out all the stuff. But... Uh... Owen pushes that chain block out of the way and uh, walks to the front and uh, leaving his gun against the Jeep. Um, he says, how'd they even get one of these things started? <laughs> I like how the adult there doesn't know doesn't know how to get it started where the boys did. Um, <laughs> even though they had a lot more resources at their, at their, uh, at their reach than what he does here. But um, mm-hmm. now with even more light in the room, uh, you can see there's another warning sign on the wall. Um, you can see the yellow coat. It's a lot clearer at the entrance. Um, several oxygen cylinders and that around as well. 
uh, petrol water can over below the uh, the coats as well. Maybe one of those was used to put f- some fuel in it. We don't know. Again, um, it's described in the novel that they got spark plugs and fuel from the buggy, so maybe that fuel can there is something that Owen and Gray used. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, at the workbench, Owen looks through the shelves, uh, fan belts and sort of stuff. He sort of moves apart looking picks up a set of jumper cables and gets an idea and looks back at the Jeep with an expression on his face like a light bulb just went off. <laughs> he, um, we'll jump the Jeep, but I don't know what he's going to jump it off. And on the bench here, again, we see night view goggles. The light's still lit up, so they got some good batteries in them. Mm-hmm. I'd heard somewhere that these were the original ones taken out of the Universal uh, vault and dirtied up for the film. I hope that's not right, because <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> I hope those original ones are still there in, in their original condition. Yeah. Same. Well, I'd imagine they're probably not, just because the way the mechanism to make the um, lenses extend has clearly been purposely mod- or either modified or made to so that they can, um, uh, instead of coming out together, they come out separately and in different directions. So <laughs> that's something you'd have to actually do purposely. So it's not just something that would probably happen naturally from a prop sitting on a shelf, you know? Yeah, and then fall apart as well. Um, yeah. But other stuff, again, more sort of uh, garagey stuff hanging around. We've got the clutch on the bench mm-hmm. there, the alternator. A very thick open book in the middle, which I assumed would looks about twice the size of what the manual for one of these Jeeps would be, but... <laughs> I was gonna, I'd say probably quad, quadruple at least. My dad actually did get a brand new... Chevy Tahoe and the um, manual for it in complete English is the size of probably a 200 page book. <laughs> well, I went over to the uh, Jurassic Park Motor Pool on Facebook and showed the photo and asked a question, and people were posting photos of their manuals, and yes, it is as big as this book. So, um, Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, wow. like it, it covers 94 or 92 to 94. I don't think there's any many changes. Um, ah. But yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a pretty thick book. So I'm guessing this is the uh, um, the full the full workshop like dealer workshop manual, not just your uh, your brief mm-hmm. brief one you might get. It's it's the full workshop yeah. manual for a Jeep. So. True. So yeah, confirmed. <laughs> this that's what that's what it might be. We don't actually see the pages, but uh, it's what it looks like anyway. I would say they probably might have used it, but at the same time, it looks like there's a lot of kind of dirt and debris on those open pages. So who knows if they actually if that's actually what they were using, or if that just happened to be there open already. Hmm. Yep. Oh, the boys! I didn't even think about that. Oh, I was, I was yeah. thinking about what the uh, the jeeps were originally in there for, but <laughs> yeah, if it's a manual sitting there, then surely the yeah, the boys would have used it as reference material for. Mm-hmm. But in saying that, as you said, it does. The pages do seem dirtied up a bit, and what condition paper would be like <laughs> in, in this in this as well? Yeah. But we get um, there's more hard hats on the shelves too. We've got a bank of radios in their charging dock. Uh, hard to tell here if they're sort of the original Motorola radios used from Jurassic Park. They have that look, but there's no the red lights aren't on like we see when Ellie mm-hmm. gets them out of the dock. So obviously there's no power to the building that we know of. Which is an important thing to know for Camp Cretaceous <laughs> season three, maybe. It's just one of those things where I can see it and looking at it, and I can hear the Jurassic Park theme going off as a as I imagine Ellie clicking on the radios and handing one to uh, Hammond. <laughs> it may be <laughs> me going instead of you because I'm a and you're a. <laughs> it does. It does. It. it you mentioned a couple of minutes ago Spielberg telling Trevorrow to pull it back a little bit, but still little stuff like this, it just it takes you straight back to Jurassic Park. Yeah, oh, it definitely does. Which I'm surprised one of the boys didn't grab one and try and, and try and change, check channels, try to radio someone if those radios were there. Again, it would have been another Easter egg if Gray said to Zach, oh, I'll try Channel 2 <laughs> or something like that. Owen picks up the jumper leads and yeah, looks back at Jeep 18 and uh, goes over and unlatches the bonnet, but before he can do anything, there's a thunderous boom from outside the uh, garage, and we get that debris falling from the ceiling, which... I, I love the little 
um, signs of a big theropod moving around. Yes, you got the the sound effect and the the rumbling in the in the base, but just having mm-hmm. the debris, the sand, the, the stuff falling from the roof because the building felt it as well. There's a nice little touch. I do like that they included some of these films, but. Mm-hmm. Claire goes to Owen's side in front of the jeep as we hear the second boom and uh, the large footfalls of the predator getting closer and they begin to crouch down in front of the jeep hiding in front of that uh, the winch in the front bumper bar. That's when Owen looks around the side of the jeep and realises, of course, <laughs> he did, he's left his gun just out of reach and uh, <laughs> we cut back as, uh, to Owen as the booms get closer um, and then we can see the Indominus foot just outside the doorway of the garage so... The sound of the jeep departing the building wasn't the only thing. Well, it didn't just attract Owen and Claire. It attracted the uh, Indominus as well. Mm-hmm. I do kind of like, though, also how the shot of Claire and Owen hiding behind the jeep somewhat mirrors the shot of the of um, Lex and Tim hiding behind the shell, the cabinetry in the kitchen. Hmm. Yeah, and what, oh, not to be sexist or anything, but once again, it's, it's the female there sort of cowering, and Owen looks at her and just has that look on his face like, don't you say it word. <laughs> um, <laughs> where there it was sort of Lexi being a bit scared as well, but I suppose both kids were equally scared in that scene. Mm. Owen's here, he's dealt with it before. <laughs> he hasn't got Diesel to rub all over himself this time, although there's fuel right behind him if he got under this <laughs> and started rubbing himself in fuel as well, but... Uh, as we'll find next minute from the uh, from the novel, the Indominus can still smell the the poo the poo on them. So, not something that really looks obvious here that those smears are still over their face. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and her chest, yeah. Yeah, but uh, as the minute ends, the camera pulls back to show the uh, the big head of the Indominus inside the garage smelling for him. So that's it's down on all fours, sort of crawling <laughs> into the garage here. Mm-hmm. Clearly, well, not so much smelling for Owen and Claire, but just uh, investigating what, what was in here. You can, they can probably smell the boys. It's dealt with them before and probably recognises the smell here again. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's 74. Anything else before we get to novel comparisons? Uh, no, I think we're pretty good. All right. Uh, everything we see here happens as it does in the novel, so nothing else to add there either. <laughs> so, Dave, that's it for minute 74. We'll get heavy for the day. All right, sounds good. 